Hey guys, Octane Restorations here, and we are back with the 1996 GL1500 Goldwing Special Edition. So in the last video, we got the carburetor off. Now this video is going to be focusing on actually rebuilding the carb. As you can see right here, we have some things that are stuck on it, like the throttle plate. So a lot of this carburetor is going to get soaked in gasoline overnight. We actually start tearing down the carb at 2.30, if you want to skip to that point. So one of my main reasons for soaking the carburetor is because we have some things that are sticking that are gummed up like the throttle plate and the slides that control the tapered needle they're not sliding anymore and the throttle plates are pretty they're pretty stuck so you know as you can see right now one of the slides i actually had to use a screwdriver to get it to move they were just real gummed up from sitting for so long so that's the main reason we're going to go ahead and disassemble it, get the whole thing soaking. If it's rubber, you don't want it to soak. What I'm going to do is I'm going to completely disassemble the carburetor and just put the metal pieces in the gasoline to soak the stuff that I know is safe for the gasoline. All the gaskets and diaphragms and everything of that nature, I'm going to take out and they're not going to get soaked. You know, the... Gasoline may not necessarily hurt some of the gaskets, but it can cause them to swell. So that's why I'm opting out to take those out. I'm taking this video just showing where all the hose routing is. This is something I do with all of my motorcycles, everything I work on. If I'm taking it apart, I'm going to take a video showing where all the hoses are, especially this one because it has air hoses coming off of it. It has multiple fuel drain hoses, has the radiator hoses. I just want to be sure that I'm not not missing anything. Plus it also gives us a good overview of the whole thing. You can see how dirty it is. Does the dirt on the outside affect the outside? Not necessarily, but it is an eyesore. <laughs> but we're going to get this whole thing cleaned up. Like I said, first we're going to disassemble it. We're going to take off all the rubber pieces. That was a rubber boot. Fairly straightforward process. So if you watched my last video, you know about JIS screwdrivers. So those blue handle screwdrivers I have are called JIS screwdrivers. They look a lot like a Phillips, but they're technically not. A lot of these Japanese motorcycles, it's not a true Phillips. It's called a JIS or a Japanese industrial standard. So if you work on these bikes pretty often, lawn mowers, etc., I would really recommend getting a good set of JIS screwdrivers, Japanese industrial standard. It's denoted by a little dot on the screw. So you can tell a difference from a regular Phillips. If you're stripping a lot of the Phillips heads with your screwdrivers, it's probably because it's not a Phillips, it's a JIS. So that's just something to consider whenever you're taking these apart. A different, the right screwdriver can make all the difference. So this is the veins of the engine per se, delivers the blood to the engine, the gasoline. And as you can see, they're really bad corroded. So we're going to go ahead and finish disassembling it. Like I said, all of the pieces that we're going to soak in gasoline are going into the thing on the right. All the metal pieces that it won't affect. But everything else, all the diaphragms, all the gaskets, the accelerator, diaphragm, you know, that's even going in there. We're soaking everything that needs to be soaked. We got the two carbs completely disassembled. We have this box of everything that the gas could potentially harm, all the gaskets, diaphragms that we're not gonna soak. And then we got the box of everything else. <laughs> On here, so we have these two different hoses. I put a blue mark with a Sharpie on, but I don't know if the Sharpie's gonna stay on after it soaks in the gasoline. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a zip tie on it too. 
I'm just stacking the parts in right now. And again, this is just gonna be a pretty basic method. That old gasoline that we had in the tank, we're gonna use that as the gasoline to soak them in because it's still technically a solvent and it'll still do a good job at dissolving the stuff on it. We got it all filled up. The parts are completely covered. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and throw a lid on this bucket and let it sit for 24 hours. You really do wanna cover this because gasoline releases vapor and that vapor is explosive. So just something to consider. Put it in a container with the lid. So after this, I bought a strainer and next time I'm putting the strainer on the bottom and putting wire, and so then I can just lift it up out of the bucket. But I didn't have a strainer this time, so what I had to do is pump out all the gasoline. I just didn't want to get nuts and bolts everywhere. As you can see, this actually worked really well. I'm using a cheap paintbrush to agitate all the dirt and grime that was on it. I filled up that little oil changing tub with some gasoline. And like I was saying, that paintbrush is Soft bristle, but it's enough to agitate all the dirt and grime and grease and everything else off. Is this a $200 parts washer? No, it's not. We're making do with what we have. I like these soft bristle brushes from Harbor Freight. You can get a, like a 20 pack of them for like 10 bucks. I mean, they're a great deal. Once they, you know, get clogged up with dirt, grime and debris, you can either throw them away or you can cut the bristles back. What I did on the other brush that you see right here is I cut the bristles closer to the handle, which makes it stiffer. The longer it is, the less stiff it'll be, and the shorter it is, the more stiff it'll be. So you can use that little brush to really go after some of that stuck on dirt and grime that the softer, more flexible bristles might not get. Just a little tip, I use these brushes for a lot of things. I even use them for detailing motorcycles. I'll wrap the metal in duct tape and use them on like the engine fins uh, and little places that I need to get into. I also have that little plastic tub with some gasoline in it and that's what you can use to dip your brush in and clean it periodically. On the bottom of this pan there will get to be a layer of dirt and grime that you take off. I mean you can see here this is the difference of the unclean side versus the clean side. And all we did is use a cheap paintbrush, I believe this is a one inch, to agitate all that off. And again, the shorter you cut it, the more stiff the brush will be. The longer you leave it, the less stiff, the more flexible. But again, this is just making do with what we have. We don't have an expensive part washer, but we do have an oil change pan, some gasoline, and some brushes. So we can wash these parts to the best of our ability. And that's what we've been doing. As you can see, soaking overnight made the throttle plate spring back beautifully. It's not stuck anymore. Both sides of it, actually. So as you can see, this one open and closes with ease, and it springs back to its closed position, which is exactly what we were hoping to do. And again, this is old gasoline that we we're going to throw out. But again, gasoline does release vapors. So don't do this near open flames. And I actually do have a fan pointed at me that blows all the fumes away from me. So I'm not just sitting there breathing all that in. The only downside to this is all of the varnish gets stuck in the bottom of the oil pan that we're using. If it looks like you're just pushing it around like it does here, you know, you're just leaving brush strokes in the varnish. That's why I have this little plastic tub over there with gasoline in it, and I use that to clean my brush. So most park washers have circulating pumps, so you don't get this problem here. But all of that varnish that's on the bottom of that, that's the tar build up from the gasoline dissolving and all that other dirt and grime. So I'm just rinsing my brush in it right now, 
getting all that off the brush and then it'll go back to cleaning fine. After a while, you might have to change this, the gasoline that you're using. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna pour that in and then just get some of this fresh gas. I say fresh, you know, it's probably four years old, but <laughs> it's fresh out of the old gas tank. But it doesn't have that layer of varnish and particulates on the bottom of it. So you can clean your brush in this. But you see, now that brush is primed again, ready to go. Man, just gets all that varnish off. So again, this is just a cheap, easy DIY parts cleaner. Nothing fancy about it, no moving parts. But it is a cheap and easy way to clean your pieces if you need to. This is just another comparison showing the difference on the right side which has been lightly went over with the brush and then the left side which has it. As you can see that gasoline really loosened up all of that dirt and grime and it doesn't take any effort at all to scrub it off. Very impressed with how well this worked out and I'd do this again easy. See it looks brand new. This is just showed the amount of dirt and grime that soaking in the gasoline for 18 hours got off. Just a, just a good visual that soaking it really does remove some stuff. If you were having a problem with the slide sticking like I was, you can scrub this plastic part with the gasoline mixture to get some of that off. It won't hurt it. Try to keep it off the diaphragm because it'll make the diaphragm swell. But just, just rubbing it on the plastic slide won't hurt anything. If you do have a problem with these slides sticking very often on a motorcycle, this is your second or third rebuild and the slides are sticking. You can throw a little bit of WD-40 on there, won't hurt anything. WD-40 is a solvent, technically. So it will dissolve some of the stuff on there and leave a little bit of lubricating properties behind. Just a little bit of WD-40, spread it on there, it won't hurt it. Another thing I recommend to have for these reassemblies, if you have a Harbor Freight near you, these nitro o-ring assortment kits are pretty invaluable. I think they cost five or six dollars whenever I bought this one, but if you're missing an o-ring or an o-ring is cracked, they can be a lifesaver. Everywhere you can't reach with the brush that's metal, use some type of carb cleaner on it. Every little passage, inside of every jet, everything 
that I can't reach with the brush, I'm going to hit with some carb cleaner. There might be some little dirt and debris in there that it didn't get out when it was soaking. But the carb cleaner, you know, it's forced, it's compressed too, so it'll have a little bit of pressure behind it. So it's, it's a pretty invaluable tool in these. All the little passages that air flows through, everything like that. Uh, just spray some carb cleaner in them. If you have some jets that have a lot of varnish built up and the carb cleaner won't go through them, what I like to do is grab a single bristle from a wire brush. So one of those single pieces of wire, I pull it out with a piece of pliers, and then I use that to clean inside the jet. So idler jets, you know, pilot jets, main jets, 99.9% .9 of them, a piece of wire from a wire brush will fit in there. You might have to twist it, try to quote unquote drill it in there, but that's a really good way to get rid of dirt and grime inside the jets. Whenever you're putting the float bowl gaskets back on, sometimes they won't fit or they won't stay, so you can use a little bit of grease and the grease will just help keep them inside that little groove. Just another little tip. So we're just putting these two carbs back together. Pretty much exactly a reverse order of how we took them apart. Some of these carburetors can be tricky. This is one of the more complicated carbs. I've worked on four bank carbs. This is easier than some of them, but these do have accelerator pumps and a few other things. So they can be tricky to work on. Just getting all that put on. Thanks again for watching the video. If you liked it, uh, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I try to put more content out like this. Uh, I do have some videos on the channel, some lawnmower restorations, and I do have a scooter and a motorcycle restoration already on there. So if you enjoyed this content, go ahead and check those out. Thanks again for watching. Nearly ready to do the final reveal. Getting everything put back together just the way we found it. But as you'll remember in the beginning, the carb did not look good. This is the before of it. This was the carburetor pre-cleaning. As you can see, a lot of dirt and grime. Remember the throttle plates were sticking, the slides for the tapered needle were sticking, and this is it after. Completely reassembled, completely clean, nothing sticking at all. The tapered needle slides are working great. Throttle plates snapping right back into place. All in all, this car looks brand new. And I bet it'll run good too. That's all we have for today. Stay tuned for the next one. The next part will actually be putting the carburetor back on the motorcycle. See you next time.